Everybody knows retrofitting homes and businesses to be energy efficient is good for the environment, but it also makes shrewd financial sense. Photographer Clyde Butcher was incurring high utility costs to run his Everglades gallery, and he discovered light-emitting diodes known as LED lights. This is our LED bulb to put in our track lights. As you can see, it's a very difficult retrofit. You have to unscrew the other bulb and screw this one in. There's actually seven LED lights in here, and there's a lens on each one which controls the image. And the area here is to keep it cool. It's very sophisticated light. When I first talked about this, they were $80, they're down to 40 now. And I think within a short period of time, they'll be down to 25 While the initial outlay is high, the eventual savings with LED lighting is impressive. The money I'm going to save in this gallery with these lights, they're going to last me running 12 hours a day for 11 years. That's how long they're supposed to last, 11 years. I will actually make $50,000 in profit from saving electricity, the air conditioning, and replacing the other bulbs. So I'm going to make, I think it was like a total of $8,000 investment, I'm going to make $50,000. Now that, as far as I'm concerned, is the way to save the environment, is to make money and do good things. LEDs have been around since 1962. They're the little red and green bulbs seen in radios, TVs, and other electronics, as well as in outdoor Christmas lights. But when white LED bulbs were invented in 1993, everything changed. This room right here has a pretty good size, about 500 square feet, and there's 40 bulbs in here. And I'm using 280 watts electricity. With the other lights, it had been 2,800. The whole gallery went from 12,000 to 1,200, 11,000 watts every second. It's a lot of electricity. My electrical bill went down 60% because I'm saving air conditioning besides electricity for the light bulbs. People forget the heat factor of the bulbs. Because his home is surrounded by trees, Butcher can't convert totally to solar power, but he has installed a couple of solar panels. A lot of people think when you put solar in a home, you have to run the whole home. I'm just maybe saving 20% of my electricity. But if everybody saved 20%, we'd be in better shape today. I think by 2020 in Florida, we got to increase our power consumption by 20%. So there we go, we got that 20% right there. Energy efficiency is really important because we can do it now. We don't have to build some big infrastructure. It's a, it's a now thing. And we need that so Big Cypress doesn't get flooded. I mean, that's the reason we're doing this is so that the global warming, people don't understand the effects of global warming. It's a lot more than just warming up. So I thought it was my responsibility as an environmentalist to do what I can do to bring my uses of power down. When Sally Wolliver and David Clark made the decision to make their Naples home more energy efficient, they began with easy steps like changing light bulbs to compact fluorescents. But they soon discovered that the house needed more substantial retrofitting when it came to the insulation. The house was built originally in 1983, so you know over 25 years ago. And if you've ever looked at the insulation of a house that's 25 years old, especially here in Florida, if it's an R12, it looks like 20-year-old cotton candy. So not very energy efficient. So what we wanted to do was make it more energy efficient. There is a spray insulation, and if you've ever seen a can of great stuff, it looks just like great stuff. And that's what sprayed into our attics. We found that it immediately dropped the temperature. So if we kept the thermostat set at 80, it kept the thermostat, the entire upstairs stayed at 80 degrees. David Clark's creativity and passion for invention inspired him to maximize the energy sources available to their Naples home. Some of those steps are conventional, others are a little more unusual. The windmill, it's, it's pretty straightforward. If the wind is blowing faster than about 10 miles an hour, that makes power. In a full wind, our house is lit, our water is on, our TV is on, and at least two of the computers are on. That's what a full wind will do for you. In a more moderate wind, it'll run the lights and water. 
energy from the windmill and the solar panels feeds into a battery system. Because they're electrically isolated from each other, the one producing the most power replenishes the batteries. So how exactly did Clark build the windmill? I bought a converted alternator from a company that does this uh, commercially. The tower itself is a design I came up with for a TV antenna and I simply reused the design. Anyone that knows anything about Florida winds is going to know that uh, there are a lot of times when there isn't much wind. I wasn't concerned about those times. I was uh, really aimed more at when there's lots of wind, like when there's a tropical storm or hurricane. And generally, when you're having winds like that, you're not having a lot of sunlight. That one windmill will produce as much, almost as much power as all the solar panels on our roof. The other thing the windmill will do is it'll produce power at night, which solar panels never will. Little GTO, you really look at Three deuces and a four speed and a 380. Imagine old car parts being put to such good use maybe even helping cool your house and reduce high electric bills caused by air conditioning. It's part of a 1972 GTO, I'm told. And uh, it's going to be part of a cooling system for the house. Uh, anyone who has cooled a large building or, or knows about how they're cooled knows what a chiller is. And basically, water is drawn through a mesh it drops heat as it does this because of the evaporation of the water. This will collect the water from the bottom of the unit and cool our house with that chilled water. That's what this is all about. The whole house fan works on the same principle that all of us remember that grew up in houses that did not have central air conditioning. It's a great way to cool a house down and it's especially wonderful in April and May and sometimes June and then again in October. You can actually run your fan at night, open up the house, turn the whole house fan on, it will pull air through and it will cool the inside temperature to match the outside temperatures. Window surfaces increase the temperature of a home during the hot summer months, making air conditioners work extra hard. We looked at a film and the film is, it's a 3M product and you can apply it yourself, although I would not recommend it. We brought in a professional. And what it does is it reduces the UV light coming in, it reduces the heat, and it does reduce impact. Prioritizing energy efficiency for homes and businesses can lead to cautious optimism that cleaner, alternative energy sources will help meet the needs of the future.